You're welcome back to The Breakfast. And right now, we'll be talking to Mr. Chris Mwokobia, uh, discussing setting the agenda for the new president of Ohaneze Indigo, who's just been elected. Uh, his name is Professor George Obiozo. He is a celebrated Nigerian diplomat. And, uh, you know, there's, there's been this clamor for Igbo presidency for 2023. So we'll be discussing all of that right now on The Breakfast. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you. All right, so first of all, he's been elected as a president general of uh, the social cultural group Ohanese Indigo. But we see that so many you know, other Igbo groups were not so happy about this, especially since the president sent a congratulatory message to him. So there's allegations that you know, he's uh, not loyal to the Igbo race. What's your, what's your thoughts about this? No, I very well disagree with those who, who will say that Obvious why it's not loyal to the Iberis. I will disagree. But I'll say clearly here that I know that a large segment of the Igbo people would have rather a much younger and much vibrant and a perhaps a much active um, leader for the Ohanese and Igbo. You know, I, I think that the sentiment, and that was why there was a parallel election just a few days before or so before the before he emerged. So I, I would say clearly that every Igbo man uh, has the Igbo tendencies and Igbo blood in him. Uh, every Igbo man is proudly Igbo. But what is important here is the fact that what affects the Igbo in Nigeria uh, affects affects all of us, and 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 that is why uh, maybe the president hastened to congratulate him. I, I think that those who are beginning to raise uh, issues about conspiracy should stay off it and allow him function. Okay. We're, we're eventually, of course, we we'll would be following closely and seeing how um, his um, reign as a uh, Nez and Digbo president uh, goes. But I'm going to also ask you, um, Chief John Nyawodo, the outgoing president, um, also had his own levels of criticism. Um, in different aspects, uh, he had challenges with, you know, the support of uh, the PDP um, in, um, you know, the elections. He had challenges with the IPOB and, uh, you know, the, trying to, you know, bring them all under one umbrella. There was so many other times when Nyawodo was under pressure from Igbos and not even non-Igbos. So I, I want your thoughts on what um, Professor Giorgio Biozzo, um has as a task ahead of him. Um, in the next couple of years? Well, he does have a lot to chew. He does have a lot to contend with. He does have a lot of pressures on his shoulders. I say this advisedly, because uh, if you look at the fact that uh, the IPOP tendency is strong and effective, and people are asking strong questions. If you look at the fact that um, towards the end of the uh, John Wodo uh, uh, tenure, a lot of questions about Igbo loyalty to what they call the Igbo, the Igbo presidency uh, came up. If you look at the fact that across the Southeast states, there are tendencies uh, calling for the equivalent of a Moteku or what you call a yes. regional security outfit, then he has a lot to contend with. I, how he how he grapples with that reality is another challenge entirely. Uh, I hope I hope that he's able to look at the the dispassionately the Igbo role and Igbo place in Nigeria. I hope he's able to dispassionately address the agitation uh, by a pub and uh, and other tendencies. I hope he's able to dispassionately galvanize the Southeast governors in pursuing a proactive developmental cause for the Southeast states. I, I know that it is not easy, but perhaps because he's a seasoned diplomat and uh, he, he knows the power of bureaucracy and diplomacy, I, I hope that he's able to grapple with the realities. All right. All right. So Firstly, before I delve into the politics of this, there are you know, differing views on Ohanese Indigbo as a social cultural group and what they stand for. So could you, could you shed more light on uh, what you would think the goal or the, the grand vision is for Ohanese Indigo in Nigeria? 
Now, can you repeat that, please? I'm asking. I'm saying there are different people. Different people have different ideas on what they think Ohaneze Indibu stands for, represents in Nigeria. So, would mm. you care to shed more light on the goal of that group or their vision in Nigeria? Simply, the first uh, call to understanding the mission, the motive, the intentment, and the purpose of a group is first X-ray its name. Ohaneze simply means. Um, Igbos are home and are diaspora. Igbos uh, and their, their demands. Igbos and what concerns them. Igbos and what affects them. You know, now Ohaneze is more like a clearinghouse uh, of Igbo interests, a leadership uh, group that protects, defends, and espouses ideals and ideas that will benefit Ndibo. In the, in the Nigerian uh, project, if you like, and across, because you have Ohanese chapters across uh, in, the, in the diaspora, and they're all intended to protect and defend Igbo interests and make things better for Igbos in the larger interests. Okay. Uh, that is what I know. But let me clearly say before, because I don't know how long this will be, let me clearly say here that regarding what has become fervent uh, which is the call for an Igbo president. I truly am an Igbo, I'm Igbo, but I differ totally and completely from the call for an Igbo president. I think that what Ndibo should do is ask for restructuring. That is the way to go. If the Igbos have restructuring in the entity called Nigeria, they will, they will be able to deploy their resources for growth and progress. Mm -hmm. They will not have these issues about who is intimidating, oppressing, or marginalizing anyone. Because in a restructured Nigeria, it will be your choice whether you want to run for presidency or not. But the truth is that your states and regions will be developed at the pace you choose. Okay, um, that way we can hold our leaders at different segments responsible and responsive to the people. All right. I, I remember Nyan Wodo, you know, was one of those who also championed the call for restructuring. He, he spoke about it countless times. Um, you know, it's, I, I don't know if you would expect that uh, uh, George Obiozo will have similar ideologies and would want to continue to push with, you know, the same ideologies that Nyan Wodo um, had before he even, his tenure ended. I hope he does. I hope very strongly and deeply that he does. And I do so for two reasons. The only way to truly protect Igbo interest in Nigeria is to call for restructuring. Restructuring will advance the frontiers of justice. It will advance the frontiers of equity. It will advance the frontiers of fair play in governmental appointments and appointing protocols. Secondly, restructuring will give every section, segment, and tendency in Nigeria a true sense of belonging. That is why I hope and expect, and I pray, that Obioza follows through on that agenda. Because without that, uh, those who are calling for Igbo president are just playing uh, the personal card. They're just simply being egocentric. Because if you like, get the best Igbo man into Asorok. He will fail like the other presidents because our structure does not allow for excellence. We have a dysfunctional structure. We have a failing and a failed structure. We have a structure that does not encourage hard work and industry. We have a, a structure that is grossly rent-seeking and rent-taking. So I think that what we must do is to ask the president or his leader, the super diplomat, Jojo Biozo, to pursue the ideals of the restructuring, because that's the way to go. Yeah, I, no. I would say that that is the silver bullet that the Nigerian state needs. Mr. Mubia, many members of Ohaneza Indigbo would actually agree, would actually disagree with you about your stance for the Igbo presidency for 2023. And if you say the Ohaneza Indigbo is all about fighting for Igbo interests, many would tell you that their interest for the next presidential elections in Nigeria is for somebody from one of the five Southeast states to emerge as president in 2023. So would you agree that this issue of Igbo presidency will be an issue for the new ESCOs, the new, you know, president 
President General of the Ohanese Indigo for the coming years? It will definitely be one of the issues that will agitate the leadership of the Ohanese Indigo. But whether it will uh, become an ideal for Ohanese Indigo to pursue, I disagree. Because if they truly care about Igbo interest, they will understand that there is a whole lot of difference between the call for Igbo presidency and the, the call for restructuring. And they will truly dispassionately understand that what will favor Ndibo is restructuring rather than the political gambit being thrown out by egocentric politicians, which is a call for Igbo presidency. Okay. I, I, I am opposed to Igbo presidency for three fundamental reasons. Number one, uh, except those who are calling for Igbo presidency want an Igbo man to feel like the others, then they can go on because the structure will not allow him to succeed. Number two, what Nigeria needs is an enterprise that is functional, not this dysfunctional enterprise. So rather than just ask for an Igbo president, what Ndibo should be asking for is for the restructuring of Nigeria such that industry, handwork, hard work and competency will be encouraged. Okay. Then number three, uh, no nation in the world has succeeded being a rent-seeking enterprise. We need to be industrious, we need to grow companies and, and grow our economy. And the way to do so is to allow the states and the regions to grow at their comparative, uh, grow businesses and areas where they have comparative advantage. That is the only way to make this country great again. So okay. I hope and I pray that our Hanese is able to differentiate between the poison chalice called Igbo presidency and the noble cause called restructuring. All right, so I, I hope that we would have time to also speak on um, the aspect of the Southeastern governors. I probably will come you know, into that right after this. Uh, but I want you to first of all speak with regards his task uh, to unite Igbos in, an, in their entirety, both Igbos here in Nigeria and in diaspora, the MOB, Masob, IPOB, and now every other, you know, factor with their own, you know, little directions here and then personal interests. Um, how can George Obiozo uh, unite every single detail that is, you know, an Igbo man? What he must do, what he must do is to reach out to the leaders of the several and disparate Igbo groups. He must assess them. He must sit down with them. He must talk with them. He must present his agenda to them and then um, see where they disagree to agree. Because ultimately, what is important is the survival of Ndibo in the Nigerian project. And what is important is that the super diplomat must bring in his ideals. I hope he's strong enough to do that. Traverse several spaces, both in the country and in the diaspora. Engage with patriotic and committed Igbo hands and minds and work together with them into forging a fundamental Igbo agenda for the development of not only Igbo interests in Nigeria, but the general interest. Because I say this clearly, um, pursuing uh, segregation, pursuing separation, pursuing um, what you know, the current core of IPOB but pursuing is just uh, not a well thought out project. I say this clearly. The cut of two is strong. The cut of three says the holy book uh, no one can break. Nigeria is a cut of three, three major tribes three major religions with our sense of respect, three major tendencies. This code is almost impossible to, to disintegrate, to break. What we can do to this code of three is to advance the frontiers of justice, equity, fairness, and cooperation. And the only way to do that is to push the agenda of restructuring.
right, so in addition to the key points you've mentioned, you know, the fact that you're saying the new president, uh, Musa Obiozo, must try to unite the Igbo race and that uh, they must also, you know, clarify or settle the issue of Igbo presidency versus restructuring. What other key agendas within the uh, Igbo social culture, Igbo Pohanese in Igbo, should uh, Judge Obiozo be looking to address? He must learn a few things from the Jews. He must learn another thing from the Lebanese. He must teach Ndibo to think home. He must teach Ndibo to develop the Southeast. He must teach Ndibo to organize a fundamental party where the super Igbo businessman will meet in a Southeast economic party with the Southeast governors and think about how to develop the Southeast. It is possible and if very important to have an awesome and effective collaboration between Igbo businesses and their governors. If they do so, perhaps they can reach a put together for sure, not only the, 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 the dredging of the Niger on paper, but fundamentally ensure that they have an ongoing and effective port in the Southeast. You don't expect Igbo businesses to travel from the Southeast to Lagos every time to Tinkan and Apapa Wolf to clear their goods, when in actual fact, you can dredge and effectively have a port in Onicha and, and Port Harcourt. So there are several things they can pursue. But I, I know that, like I said, they have to learn a few things from the Jews. They have to learn a few things from the Lebanese. Think home. Develop home. Think right. about how you benefit your people. And then ultimately, uh, this new uh, presidency will be seen to, to be very proactive and effective. And that is what is necessary. Uh, all right. Now, um, I, I've in the past spoken with uh, Nyang Wodo. Um, and I remember that one of the things that he had mentioned um, in our last conversation was uh, the, not, the lack of support from Southeastern governors. Uh, Professor George Obiozo uh, has, of course, now been elected. How important is it for him to be able to rein in all the southeastern governors, regardless of their political parties? Uh, if you, of course, remember the Ebony State governor just left the PDP to the APC. Um, and, of course, there's um, Imo State also that is, you know, not, not a PDP state. Uh, how do you think that Arnez and Nibu can ensure that the southeastern governors work for Ohanez and Igbo, and for the interests of the Igbos, regardless of their political affiliations. No, I, I think that that I think I think that that's what uh, his training as a super diplomat comes into into uh, the picture. He has to reach out to them. He has to tell them that he's coming to them in peace. That he's coming to think about what affects and talk about what affects all directly. He's coming to further for and, and advance Igbo interest positively in the larger picture. He is not a separatist. He is not being goaded by any separatist organization. But because of his love for the Igbo and because of his love for Igbo interest and because of his love for the larger Igbo vision and mission, he is coming to them in peace. And then he must also hear them out and understand why they have been a bit askance regarding the protection and the advancement of Igbo interests. Because whether you like it or not, every governor at some level is the head of the Igbo in his state, every South is governor. And so if you, if you truly want to be called an Igbo leader, you must work in tandem, in understanding, in harmony with the South is governor. So I, I think that if he works at it diplomatically, if he throws away every air of ego and arrogance and approaches them effectively, they perhaps, because they, they, all, they all want peace in the Southeast region and they want progress, they will, they will eventually and ultimately end up as partners in progress. Do, do you think that there have been lessons learned from the Ones and Igbo endorse endorsement of um, uh, political parties in the last general elections. Do you think that lessons have been learned from that and uh, Professor George Obielzo 
um, has, you know, those uh, lessons in mind going forward? Uh, do you think, you know, those are some of the things that maybe had created issues for Nyawodu? And Obiozo will, of course, maybe take a different approach in the future. I think that uh, most traditional or regional or cultural groups must understand uh, first that as leaders of cultural tendencies and ethnic groupings, uh, you have members who belong to different political parties and to endorse openly a candidate or a party may not just be the wisest thing to do. I'll give you a practical instance. The Jewish community in America, almost always before every election, causes the leading presidential candidates of the two tendencies, the Republicans and the Democrats, to meet with them at the dinner where they present Jewish interests. And I say clearly that that is what sociocultural groupings should be doing in Nigeria. Rather than outrightly endorsing a candidate of any of the parties, what they must do is present an agenda to the parties. Whoever wins pursues the agenda that they have so presented. Because um, when a father wakes up to take sides with one or two of the children, the father will be deemed to be partial and biased. So I hope that uh, the president of Hanisa leadership will, will endorse ideas, manifestos, and agendas, rather than political parties. I hope that they will be able to dispassionately meet with the leadership of the two political parties, the leading parties and other parties, and articulate a particular vision and mission. And stop there, you know, and allow their members to take sides, you know, but ensure that their motto, their mission, their agenda, and their manifesto is held as sacrosanct by either of the parties. I, 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 that is why I, I hope and I believe that uh, George Obioza would have learned would have learned from the very mistakes of the past. You know, I want to see an Ohaneze that is able to protect Igbo interests irrespective of the party in power. I want to see an Ohaneze that pushes for justice, equity, and fairness, irrespective of political leanings. I want to see an Ohaneze that puts Igbo interests above political interests in Nigeria. And I want to see an Ohaneze that puts Igbo interests beyond partisan interests in Nigeria. I want to see an Ohaneze that out after the survival and strength of Nigeria, after our patriotic ideals, puts second the protection of the Igbo interests in Nigeria. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see a partisan Ohaneze. I don't want to see a, an Ohaneze that uh, sides with the APC or the PDP or right. partisan interests. I want to see an Ohaneze that articulates fundamental ideological precincts for, for, for the leadership of our country. All right, Mr. Wokovia. Yeah. That advances protocols that are fair and square. All right. So you're, you're basically saying the issue, the issue should be about visions and not candidates or political parties. Uh, that's duly noted. And last question before we we'll let you go. I would like to find out what you, what you think about uh, Ohanese and Dibu and what their relationship sh should be with other social cultural groups, talking about Pandev, Arawa, and uh, yeah. Afeni Ferry. Well, I, I sincerely think, because I've been following the activities of Ohanese lately, and uh, with all sense of respect, I had some kind of father and son relationship with the uh, outgoing, uh, the immediate past president. So I, I, I'm aware that there was a fundamental, a fantastic relationship with all the groups, groupings. Uh, what I pray and expect is that the new president of Hanese will also extend that olive branch to the Arewa groupings. And I, I say this advisedly. Because the way out of the nadir for this country, the way out of poverty, disease, and despondency is for a holistic overhaul of our country. We must effectively engage other groupings and make them understand that our interest for the good of all, when we converse ideals that center on restructuring, we're saying that we want back the granite pyramids in the north. Mm. 
We're saying that we want back the world from heights and, uh, and, and skin. We're saying that we want back the world from sesame. We're saying that we want Nigeria to grow again. We're saying that we want our brothers and sisters on the streets as our marjories to be engaged. We're saying that we want a country that's industrious, a country that builds back our factories and refineries. We're saying that we want a country that is just fair, peaceful, and equitable. And so the time has come for Hanese, as well as the Afenifere, the groups of the, of the Just Talk, the Jokun Talk, the Thief Talk. The time has come for us to galvanize, right. articulate fundamental ideals that will take this country away from Thank you very this much. Uh, divisive, divisive tendencies of leadership to the amazing place of promise. Right. And so much as I am not um, one of those who have tendencies that, that dance around ethnic groupings, I believe that they are necessary for the emergent Nigeria right. that we seek, we create, Mr. and we're working for. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chris Onwokobia, uh, for your thoughts on the breakfast this morning. It's my pleasure. From here, we, of course, wish the new Oneza uh, Ndibo uh, president-elect, uh, Professor George Obiozo, um, a very interesting tenure. I heard he was a former ambassador to the U.S., uh, Cyprus, and Israel. And uh, we wish him a peaceful and a successful tenure um, um, in the future. Stay with us. Uh, we're now going to be talking, of course, a follow-up to the discussion we had yesterday on security. The DSS has warned Nigerians that there are certain elements in our society that might be trying to create religious uh, tensions and crises across the country. So we have a follow-up discussion on that coming up right after the short break. Good morning.